Hey folks, ACTCG here and in today's video we've got another versus matchup for OP02. We have got myself playing Law on the left and Joe playing Kinemon on the right here. This is a pretty interesting matchup because they're both effectively tier 1 decks. A lot of tier lists will put Law in tier 1.5 because um, it's got quite a high ceiling so it can be easy to, to mess up really. It's a lot of micro decisions in Law uh, and Kinemon is just like stably good. Um, it's very very strong. Um, I believe um, I won the die roll and chose to go second here. Um, so yeah, um, pretty happy with the hands here. We just crack on. Uh, and you can clearly see that I've already forgot what I'm doing. So I just go second because I need to draw cards in law. I need I need stuff. And then we see turn one. Uh, Joe can play uh, Bonnie here, which is yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I've got tier one, turn one dad on here myself, and you can see I already have a Nami in my hand. Um, so I look through and I hit another Nami here, which is just super good value for me. Uh, I mean, so for the next two turns, I'm going to be playing potentially two Namis, which is just yeah, pretty crazy. But Joe has some nice. Um, some nice uh, cards here himself with the Bonnie and hopefully he can hit something really important. One thing to keep in mind in this matchup is that if you see it weird like oh why can he play it cheaper just remember that um, Kinemon can be activated and then he can play multiple cards and then use Kinemon's effect so if you see him using Kinemon's effect when he has more than one card on the field that's why he starts every turn and says Kinemon effect um, so that it's always there it's always an option which is yeah really nice. Um, we can see some of the cards in his hand he's got um, Punk Gibson there, which is something to keep in mind. He's going to go ahead and use Bonnie's effect uh, and grab the Apu. Um, he does have some other options there that we can see, um, but the Apu is a, a 2 plus counter, so yeah, that's going to be quite useful for him. Um, Kinemon is just, yeah, really, really solid. Um, really, really nice. Uh, the issue for him here is that Bonnie's kind of now just like rusted, um, and it's not as important in the Kinemon matchup to protect the Bonnie. You want to, but you can't protect it as much as you can, for example, in Law. Um, so that's something you've got to keep in mind playing it. Uh, so we can see that Joe's just thinking about some of his plays. He has activated Kinemon's effect here. Uh, we can see he has the um, the one drop blocker here that activates the Toki. Um, however, he's going to tap two using Kinemon's effect, making it three, and then he's able to play the Ryuzo. Um, yeah, really nice. Uh, good way for him to be able to draw some cards here. Um, so, yeah, and then he passes it over. Um, he doesn't pass it over, sorry. He attacks with the Kinemon. I'm going to take it here, um, which is a little bit risky because I do only have three life, but I want to get as many cards in hand as possible to be able to have more options. You can see here that I did get the Ezo there, which is really nice, and I draw for turn uh, a Rush Luffy. Um, I swing straight off into the Bonnie with the Dadan. Uh, so that's just in case he has um, like a Pump Gibson or anything like that in uh, in his uh, in his life stack later. Um, and you can see I'm thinking about my options here. Um, I could play Nami here, uh, get more cards, flood the board, try and do some switcheroos. Uh, but that Izo and that Ryzo is looking, yeah, pretty nice here. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know whether I think, yeah. So it's the, the issue with the play is like Nami first, look for a potential. Um, you can see I, I draw all five green cards, uh, which isn't a good sign that I'm going to get a straw hat really in this list. Um, but we move. Um, I'm not too sure what he's talking about. I think he was talking about if I bounce back like the Dadan um, and then get the value. But then I was like, I have another Dadan, so that's why I'm doing it now. Um, from this Dadan, I grab another Nami. So I have two Namis in hand and I've already played one Nami, which is just crazy. Uh, now, this is the one bit that I disagree with. I should have um, swung with Law before I played any cards. Uh, and then I play, uh, play the Dadan. Um, oh no, sorry, I play the Nami. <laughs> uh, I have Tony Chopper as an option, or I have Brook. Just looking through my hand, looking what two drops I've got, and what I'll need to be able to help me get to my shambles. I'm going to take the um, take the Chopper here, because that means I can just slap it down for one next turn, um, unless he kills something. Or even if he does, I can just slap a few things down for one. I still have another Nami in my hand, for example. So, um, yeah, pretty good turn. Uh, and then I'm going to pass it over to Joe. Um, we're just talking through like some of the decisions and like what the plays are and stuff like that. One of the nice things about like these matchups is, is that these are pretty much like practice for, for bigger matchups in the future. Um, so we like to sometimes talk through like plays and decisions um, of what we're going. Um, Joe draws for Joe 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 draws for turn. Cracks is two done. Uh, so it's nice that he's been being able to go to um, straight up to five. Um, 
just needs to stand his Kinemon. Uh, again, he'll activate that Kinemon effect so that he can play things cheaper later on in the turn. Um, but he needs to play another card here for the Ryuzo um, so that he can get that draw off. It's a bit of a weird situation uh, on this turn, so he I have a lot of just different things, so just quite a lot for him to deal with. Uh, he plays Bonnie, taps Bonnie. Um, yeah, just really nice to be able to look at the top five. We can see phew, three Apu, <laughs> which he shows me. Three Apu, which just means gone, and he did have the option for a Yamato there, um, but he, he didn't take it. He didn't need the Yamato um, from the looks of it. So yeah, just grab the Apu, got more defense here. Um, it's interesting to see what line he's gonna go down from the looks i think that's is that an odin in his hand maybe i think i got a, a tiny baby glimpse of an, a potential odin um or i don't know whether that's the event um so he has two now so the ryozo is going to allow him to draw a card when he swings with it um and nice he does that now i was going to say it would be good to swing with the ryozo first so he swings with the ryozo into dadan uh, which is the correct line of play here he doesn't have to add any more value or any resources into the Ryuzu to swing. Uh, he swings for 6 uh, into life here. Um, now again, uh, I'm going to block this. I mentioned in a few videos that if you can, you should. Um, when, especially when you've got a lot of resources. He taps th uh, 2 because of Kinemon's effect that he played earlier. Remember, he played it earlier in the effects, so it is legal to do. Uh, and he can play another Ryuzu for 3, which is just really nice. Now, I do have an Izo in my hand here, so I can deal with... A lot of what his board is saying. Um, and yeah, I haven't untapped my leader for some reason. I, I don't know. It's just one of those games. There we go. Um, so I'm thinking through my plays. I have a lot, really. I can, you can see that I have two Dadan and two Nami in hand. Which is just crazy because I've drew like all of my plus cards for red. Um, which is, yeah, just really nice value. The one thing I am missing, though, uh, is my supernovas. So something like a Bonnie would be fantastic now because I don't have any laws. Um, uh, I'm swinging for two at uh, his Bonnie. Um, you can see that I have a lot of cards here, so it's difficult for him. He does block it with the Apu. Um, I think that's mainly just to, like, stop resources, like, swinging at life and stuff like that. I am very easy at just letting my cards go, so I personally would have just not done that. Um, especially when you can see that I have two Namis out and stuff like that. Um, but I don't know what his mindset was, what he was thinking on there. Maybe he thought um, he could divert my attacks, then he can protect his Ryuzos. Which, yeah, makes sense. You're going to see uh, for a top three here, uh, and I play the Rush Zaro. So I think my plan is, uh, okay, so I can swing with this into the Ryuzo get even more attacks off um even more control and then when i shambles eventually down the line uh i could uh shambles it out for uh, an Izo here and then rest the other riser so we're saying i swing five into four uh with the riser i think joe's just telling someone about a ruling uh in a different game um which is it's nice to have it's nice to have that in like a local community of like people being able to help each other out um that's what i've really enjoyed so far about the community is like got quite a few people who are like on on ball with rulings and stuff like that and can help um when we get weird interactions just just thinking through his plans um i think this is a bit of a weird situation for him because i can obviously attack with uh law here he protects the riser with a two drop um yeah uh, I'm not gonna lie, again, I didn't expect that to happen, so my brain is now like, oh, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so my plan was to play Izo and then swing into the other one after the Ryuzo happened, um, but he's kept it up. Um, so yeah, now I'm just thinking, okay, I've got a bunch of red cards in my hand. Um, I want to shambles, but I can't really shambles into anything but the Izo. Um, so it's just a weird situation. You're going to see me tap one here, um, and I play a Nami. Look at that, a, f a board of red is not what you want to see uh, <laughs> in a deck that very specifically wants you to have a nice colour mix. I'm going to grab the Brook from the Nami, which is just nice um, protection value but it, with it being a 2 plus counter. Um, and I do have 5 on field and 2 open, so I can shamble something. Um, it's not a bad shout to do it, just to protect one of the cards that are rested. But again, I'm playing against green here, so um, it it's yeah uh so one of the other plays that you can do is um slam some don underneath the dadan um <laughs> you can see i'm thinking through my plays um so i was gonna put two underneath law here to ensure that i'm hitting the ryuzo 
there we go. Uh, and he takes it, uh, which is nice of him. He lets me take it back, which is cool. We did see an Odin uh, in his hand there. I slam two underneath the Dadan and swing at Kinemon. Um, yeah, I think we talked through that play then, as you could have seen, and that was the better decision because it just meant like two attacks means two cards, so we were just like one, two drop. And also this way, I was able to get rid of it and push a, a combat through, which is always nice. Um, but I have a bunch of value right now. Yeah, I have a bunch of cards here. Um, is it... Da, 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 da. So Joe Willow went up to... Six? No, I think six, yeah. Um, oh no, he'll be seven, sorry. So um, he could play Odin if he wanted to. But he's got to play the Momonosuke. Um, or maybe he didn't have an Odin and that's why he's grabbed it there. Momonosuke for one. Use Momonosuke effect, add Odin to hand. You can see that he has an Izo in his hand himself. Um... Which is nice, I think he's got 5 open now. Yeah. Um, and I've got a huge board, so he's got a lot that he's got to deal with. Um, Kinemon is going to swing into the rested Zoro. Um, I think I'd protect this one here. It's an easy block. Again, I'm not overly protective of my cards, but I do block it because I have an abundance of, of 1 drops. I drop it to Dan for it, um, to force him to put some resources into uh, swinging at it again. Uh, which he does, <laughs> he's perfectly comfy with. Uh, he swings with Raizu, draws a card, so he swings at it for seven. At that point, that's too many resources for me to comfortably protect, and this is a resort matchup. And then he taps and plays Okiku, which, yeah, crazy good card, and now my brain is like, uh, I need to deal with that. But luckily, remember, we do have the Izo in this, so I can deal with that Okiku, which would normally just like put me in a really bad position. And for turn, I did finally draw a green um five drop i drew the trial deck or the starter deck law sorry um that allows me to restand supernovas unfortunately i just dropped zorro <laughs> um so there goes one of my main options for supernovas but i do have um some other plays that i can play around so now i'm just looking at his board again i think i've mentioned in a few matchups that i'm i usually go towards clearing board first so swing a nami for 2k into the momonosuke um yeah, just far too much for him to be able to stop that eventually. Um, and now I'm just looking through my plays in my hand. I have Rush Luffy. So uh, I could play Izo here, bounce Izo, play Rush Luffy, uh, and Rush Luffy into the Okiku. So I, I play Izo, resting the Okiku. And I have five cards on the board. So I go ahead and do the old, the old Razzle Dazzle. I'm thinking about like what to do here. You can see I have the restand law again. Um, it's a bit of a weird situation when you get to situations like this, really. Um, mainly situations that are going well for survival, but like weird for just general play. <laughs> um, so I slam two underneath the law, swing at the Okiku. Uh, so th this is mainly just because I don't want to like reveal what I actually have in my hand. He doesn't know I have the Rush Luffy. Um, he's probably thinking I have a law. Um, that would be the general play, especially because now I have a rest of Nami. It would make sense for me to shambles into a green. Um, he does protect the Okiku. Um, I pay two for Law's shambles. Um, play the Rush Luffy, which is just really nice. Um, and then again, I'm back to thinking here. Do I want to put one underneath the Luffy so that I can ensure that Okiku has a better chance of dying this turn or do I want to put one under Dadan and swing at the Raizo I go for the one under the Luffy at the Okiku um, mainly because like he's already, I've already seen him drop two Apus uh, and he just dropped um, protection against it then as well um, was it three Apus? maybe he's dropped three two, dro two Ks I think so um, feels better this way I've just seen him lose quite a bit of his hand trying to protect it so I got a lot of value out of doing that um, I'm just trying to break down his resources more than anything. He goes to 9 Don now. Um, but we did see him add an Odin, so that's something we have to be aware of. Uh, he Momonosuke is... Uh, again, he's already activated Kinemon's effect here, so... Um, he can play um, something cheaper uh, with the effect, um, which is nice. Strength of Raizo into the Nami to draw an extra card. That's just super nice value, really. Um, and we can see he has seven up uh he swings with kenemon into the luffy um i should protect here protect here would be the better play i should never let it go for just 
a 1k blocker, especially when it's so comfortable. Just checking his done to see if he's going to slam down an Odin. Um, but yeah, just thinking about it. You can see I have Dadan, but I don't really want to drop the Dadan because I want to be able to get value. I also have Brook here, and I have an Ezo in hand, so I was thinking about dropping a 2-drop just to protect it. Um, and I don't know if that would be the play. The reason I was like, oh, if I play Dadan and then get another card, but I've already lost a lot of 2-drops. You can see uh, tap 2 for a Kiku, which is, yeah, just all reliable, which is really nice. And then he leaves 4 open, so I am a little nervous about that. Um, it doesn't make me feel super happy, um, because going into a green matchup, I'm thinking, oh gosh, please don't have 2 Punk Gibson. Um, so the right play would be to swing with Luffy, um, in case he does have Punk Gibson. Um, but let's see if I actually go ahead and do that and remember my own advice. I do. Ah, oh, ah, oh, finally some justice in the world. Uh, so I swing with Luffy into Ryuzo. He's going to tap two uh, and play the Punk Gibson. And he rests the Dadan, uh, which he's very happy about. Um, you can see I already have like the Namis in place here. So I'm going to be able to head and swing at the Momonosuke, which I do. Um, this is a really nice deck to just be able to deal with the little zero drops. I don't lose any value because the Namis aren't really going to be swinging anyway. I don't have the Don to commit to make them 5k against Kinemon. Three Don to make one attack. Um, here it definitely isn't it. I don't know why I put my hand over my Don. It made it look like I was going to slam down a 10 drop. <laughs> which, which would have been very dramatic. Uh, I play my <laughs> chopper and you see me do the little shambles emotion uh um i play the trial deck uh law here with the <laughs> shambles um and restand the luffy luffy's gonna swing into the ryuzo um really really nice fit like just value here and you can see or if you remember i do have the Izo in hand so i can tap three to rest the okiku uh, and I can swing into it. That is an option that I have. You can see I also have um, some of my one drops there. Um, so I can buff up the Nami if I need to with the Makino. Uh, but I tap three, play the Okiku over the rested Dadan. And I'm going to say go sleep to the Okiku. You're going to see me put four underneath the uh, lore then and smack into the Okiku. Um, and I'm just going to keep swapping away, get rid of his cards, keep the advantage with the tempo. Um, and yeah, now I've got a nice little cheeky blocker as well. Next turn, I've got um, two 6Ks on board. I've got an Ezo that I can shambles out. And I've got a protection in the form of um, of my little my little Tony Chopper. So I'm feeling happy about that. Uh, for turn, we saw that uh, Joe Drew Killer, the blocker one. Um, I don't know how much that's going to do to him right now. It, it, yeah. It's a bit of a weird one. It'll help because like he does have the three life and stuff like that. Just really good at keeping his life advantage well. Um, he reads the situation and likes to be in control um, of the tempo of the game all the time. So um, I've definitely got the advantage here, but he's a good player. So I'm not trying to remove my foot from said neck. Uh, he swings into the Luffy for 7k with the Kinemon. And that's just an easy um, a block here. If I did have a 2k... I think maybe the 2k would have been a better decision, but the reason I got rid of it is because I'm already struggling a bit for board space, and I do have some some cards in hand. Uh, so he plays the Odin using the Kinemon effect to reduce its cost to 7, and then we see that he plays the Toki as well, which is now a 1 drop uh, blocker for him, which is nice. But I'm in a good position here. I have uh, the big stonks would be the best way of describing it. But I'm still in a bit of a sticky situation because my entire hand is red. Um, so I, I play the Nami for one here because I want to get to five. Um, we see that I have the option for uh, the Chopper or I have the option for um, the uh, Jet Pistol. I don't have a Tomer in hand. Otherwise, that would have been the decision. I'd have just KO'd the Odin. Uh, I swing for six with the Luffy into life. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he takes it with the Toki. He just takes it. Uh, no trigger effect. Uh, swing for 6 with the Trafalgar Law here. Uh, he drops an Ezo for 2k and drops it. I use the Law effect to shambles out a Nami. So I'm trying to get even more value to my hand, which is really nice. There you see all my Otamas and all the Bonnies that I've been looking for. Um, I don't really know what Joe's seeing here. He's probably calling me a degen. That would be the right way to describe it. Uh, but nicely, um, because I shambles, I'm able to um, pay five and um, play the old razzle dazzle in the form, <laughs> in the form of the um, of the 
Trafalgar, Law, uh, and I'm able to restand the um, the Luffy, which is really nice. I've got another 6k swinging. Um, so one thing that is on my mind is the fact that Odin is going to be able to clear up those 6k's with ease if I'm swinging now. So I'm just trying to watch my tempo here. Um, this is the situation where Joe can really come back, like he's still got that blocker up. Um, scary beans, really. Um, but we crack on, we move, I swing with the Luffy. Um, he's going to block with the Toki here, uh, which is good information for me that makes me think that he doesn't have a lot of 2k's in his hand. I swing for 5 with the Law into his life, um, and we look at his hand there, he does have an event card, I'm not too sure which one it is, I can't really have a good look at it, um, but he blocks this with an x Drake for plus 1. Uh, I throw 2 underneath the uh, Izo and swing for 5 again, just trying to stomp down on his neck, uh, like I've got the pressure and now I'm trying to keep it. Um, so he takes this one. He does have Killer in his hand, but I think he's trying to play that for next turn um, so that he can have an another blocker up because obviously I've got big stonkies. Um, but I'm in a good place. I'm not overly scared. I, I know I've got a Makino and a Brook in my hand at least. Um, so yeah, I've got some nice protection. I think the other one might be, is it Chopper? Maybe. It might be Chopper. So uh, I have at least 4k um, worth of counters. He puts three under Kinemon and swings into the Luffy for eight. I'm going to let that go immediately because he has an Odin that's already sat comfortably at eight. Um, and I do not want to deal with that today. And I'm not going to lose my blockers uh, on my counter, sorry, just to protect it when I think it's going to die anyway. Um, we see him tap here and he does have the Yamato in his hand, um, which is a little bit scary if I don't get any blockers up because it's got double strike. And that hurts, hurts real bad. Um, so yeah, plays the Yamato, the Sek Yamato, and now he's only got two up, so now um, Odin can't restand, which is cool for me. Um, taps two, and plays the Killer here. Um, so the nice thing here is that the Killer doesn't have the Don under it, so he's not going to draw when it dies. Um, I untap, I now have three on board, so I have the, you can see I have two Nami, one Law, um, and I just drew uh, Vista for, for turn. Uh, which is nice because it means I can deal with the killer um, very easily. You can see, yeah, so my hand is um, Makino, Brook, uh, Vista, and Chopper. There we go. I think. Is it four? Yeah. Uh, so I tap two to play Brook. Good old Brook. And then I put two underneath the Nami, uh, making it big old stonks here. I do have Makino in hand again here, so this could be the turn to just go all out. But I pay one for the Tony Chopper. And I'm thinking through my plays, thinking through what the right thing to do here. And I don't think playing the chopper was the right thing here. I think I should have played the um, the Vista um, to kill the killer first. And then I should have bounced the Trafalgar Law. Because now he can just block with killer if he wants to. But he doesn't know what my hand is, to be fair. that That's just me commenting on after the fact perfection. So, so yeah, if he blocks with the killer now, I now have no target for Vista. And I, I say that to him. I just say I'm a big dumbhead. Uh, I, could, I could have been somebody. But instead, I am nobody. Um, but he has a small hand and I have a big board. So I'm feeling okay about it. The, the things with the law is that like there's just so many decisions to do. You can see I keep doing the, the shambles. Um, <laughs> movement with my hand. Um, I just really enjoy the deck. I get really excited. And I also just really enjoy lore as a character. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be playing one of my favorite characters, really. It's nice. Um... So, I don't know what I'm thinking about. I'm probably just thinking about my mistakes in life, really, and how I should have played the Vista to kill the killer. Um, and I definitely told Joe that. I was like, I feel dumb. And he was like, yes. <laughs> you are dumb, Ed. Uh, so I tap three underneath the law, swing for eight into Kinemon. He's got three cards in hand, and again, I've seen him drop a lot of counter. Um, he takes it, which is nice for me. I tap one, play Makino over the Nami. Tap Makino, give Nami big stonks, and then have five done underneath nami swing for 10 and we see he has a bonnie event odin and something else so we take the win thanks for watching